Hi there. Welcome back to Missionary Story. It's day three. Do you remember what I said on day one that this story was called? It's called Until the Letter Came. Well, in the story last time, the letter did come. And Lucy read it. She found out some things about her father, and then she talked to Granddad about it, and I think that part was good. But I have a feeling that as long as Lucy keeps sneaking around, things aren't going to work out too well. What are you thinking? Well, let's find out a little more. The days were flying by, and school was coming close to the end of the term. And one day Lucy was back in English class again, and the teacher said to the class, I have an important announcement. I'm ready to announce the winner of the summer holiday essay contest. Well, the class all got quiet because they wanted to know who had won. And then the teacher said, Lucy, please come forward and receive your prize. Lucy could hardly believe it. She was so excited. And her prize was a gift certificate. That's like a gift card for the new bookstore that had opened up in, in town, in Eastbury. She was so excited, she ran home, she told Gran and Granddad that they were pleased. They told her they were proud of her. And Gran even said, you're so much like your mother. She loved to write. There was someone else that Lucy was excited to tell about winning the contest, and that was Mr. Smith. You remember who Mr. Smith was? He was the man who was staying at the hotel that Don's father owned, and he had become a real friend of Don's family and a good friend to Lucy. Sometimes when she would go there to Eastbury to the hotel to visit Don, they'd sit together in the lobby and talk about writing. After all, remember, he was an author. He had written many books. Well, Lucy got there and she told him about winning the contest and he was pleased to hear it. And he, he said, that's the way, Lucy. Write about the things you know, the things you love, the people you know. Then people will enjoy reading what you've written. Then he asked her, what do you plan to do with your gift certificate? What are you going to buy? Well, Lucy said she really hadn't thought about that much, so they talked about it for a little bit. And then she said, you know what, she'd ask Don next time she got to see him. Lucy didn't get to see Don as much as before. You see, Don did not go to the same school that Lucy went to. In fact, Don went away to school. It was called a boarding school. And there he would stay during the week, and, and some weekends he got to come home. Well, the very next weekend when Don was home, Lucy and Don got together out in the woods in one of their favorite spots, and she told him all about winning the prize, and he was happy, but he seemed kind of distracted. And so she asked Don, what was he thinking about? He said, Lucy, I just keep thinking about the plan for you to get to see your father in prison. He said, I know if it were me, I'd be going to that prison to visit him no matter what. Have you thought about it anymore, Lucy? Do you have any ideas? Well, Lucy admitted that she had been thinking about it and she had one idea she had come up with. She told Don that in a couple weeks, there was a Girl Guides weekend camping trip. Remember that was like Girl Scouts? And that she was already signed up for it. Grand and Granddad wanted her to go. They'd be leaving early on a Saturday morning, and then they'd be back Sunday afternoon. Well, Don said, that's perfect. You're already supposed to be away. That would give you plenty of time to visit your father in prison and then get back. But Lucy said, but Don, I'm not supposed to be back until the next day, until Sunday. Where would I stay Saturday night? Well, he thought for a minute and he said, I've got it. There's an old barn back behind the hotel. There's nothing in it. I'll just make sure it's open. I'll put some blankets and a pillow. You can come back from visiting your father on Saturday, sleep there. Next day, head back home. Nobody will know. This is really getting pretty bad. All these plans, not talking to her grandparents. Well, then they thought a little more and 
she said, well, Dawn, Grand's given me some money for the weekend, so I'll have enough money to take the bus into Eastbury, but I don't have enough money for a train ticket for all the way from Eastbury to Greening, where the prison was. Don just thought for a second. He said, I know. I'm going to give you all the money I've been saving up to buy my new bike. Well, that was very kind of him, but even after they talked about that, Lucy said, that wouldn't be enough money for the train ticket. Where could she get the rest of the money? And then she thought of something. She would sell her gift certificate. No, I don't know how much that gift certificate was worth, but let's just say it was $20. That means she would take that, give it to someone, and they'd give her the $20, and then they could take that and buy the book or whatever they wanted. That would be enough. She'd be able to get the train ticket. So the plan was made. But she said nothing to Grand and Granddad. They noticed as the days went by, there was still like about two weeks until the, the camp weekend, and Lucy was in turmoil. She didn't feel good inside. They asked her if she was feeling all right. She assured them she was. She said, oh, I must just be studying too hard at school. I guess I need a break. Well, Grand looked at Granddad and said, that's perfect. The camp weekend will be just the thing that Lucy needs. Later in that week, Lucy went to see Mr. Smith. She met him there in the lobby of the hotel and she asked him to buy her gift certificate. Wait a minute, Mr. Smith said. Why are you selling your prize? You want to go to the bookstore and get something. Don't sell your prize. Oh, but I just need some extra money, Lucy said. Please, Mr. Smith. Well, what for, Mr. Smith said. Can you tell me? Lucy just shook her head. Well, if you tell me, maybe I can help. Lucy shook her head. Do your grandparents know? Mr. Smith asked. Well, not now, Lucy said, but I expect they will know eventually. Now he was really confused. Then he thought, Lucy, are you buying something for yourself or is this a surprise you're buying for someone else? That's it, Lucy lied. That's what I'm doing. I just need the bunny. It's a surprise. It's nothing bad, I promise. Don knows all about it. He says it's not bad. And Mr. Smith, after I do this thing, I'll tell you all about it. Well, Mr. Smith believed her. He thought she was just maybe going to get something for Grand or Granddad. So he bought the gift certificate, gave her the money. But he said, I'm going to keep this right here in my drawer. I'm not using this in case you change your mind and you want your prize back. That week seemed to drag by. But finally Friday came. She was finished with school. She headed home. She was supposed to leave for camp the next morning. She got home. Grand had all the stuff she was going to need for Girl Guides Camp laid out on her bed. Lucy knew she wasn't going to need any of it, but she packed it all up in the suitcase so Gran wouldn't wonder. Next morning she got up early. Gran had a nice breakfast cooked for her. She quickly ate it. And then she told Gran that she was going to meet Mary, remember her friend who was also a girl guide? She was going to meet Mary early and they were going to go together. So Lucy picked up her suitcase and took out and headed to Mary's house. But when she got to Mary's house, she didn't ring the bell. She just quietly went up to the door and slipped a note in the mail slot in the door. She had written a note to Mary that read, Please tell the leaders I can't come to camp. I have to go somewhere else. Thanks, Lucy. She left. She got the bus, rode to Eastbury, got the train ticket, took the train to Greening. Two and a half hours later, she arrived at the stop where she was to get off. She got off, but she didn't know where to go. She didn't know how to get to the prison. She looked around and there was a lady on the street there with a place where she was selling flowers. And so Lucy asked her for directions to the prison. Hmm, the lady thought for a moment. The prison, love. Yes, you want bus number eight, ride it till the end, 
get off and then ask the bus driver, you'll be close to the prison. So Lucy went to the bus stop. She got on bus number eight, but she soon realized it was going the wrong direction. She was going back the way she had come. As soon as it stopped, she got off. She got on a different bus. This one seemed to be going the right direction. She followed it all the way to the end of its line. And as she was getting off, she asked the bus driver for directions to the prison. Oh yeah, he said, it's just up the end of this street. You're gonna see a, a church up there. Then you turn and right there's the prison. Can't miss it. So that's what Lucy did. All the way she was walking, she kept practicing in her mind. What would she say when she met her father? Well, she thought she would say, just like Dawn had suggested, it doesn't matter to me what you've done, Dad. You're my father, I'm your daughter, and I'm here to see you. Finally, Lucy was standing in front of the gate, the big door of the prison. This was an old prison. It was almost looked like a castle. There was a bell. Lucy rang the bell. And a voice came over the speaker. Hello? Lucy answered back, uh, hello? I've come to see my father, John Martin. I'm his daughter. I think he's been here for nine years. The voice said, oh, I'm sorry. It's not visiting day today. And anyway, children are not let in alone. Go back, tell your mom to bring you on a day when it's visiting day. And the voice stopped. Lucy thought, no, no, this can't happen. So she started banging on the door, kicking the door, ringing the bell, and she shouted at the top of her lungs, please, please come back. I don't have a mom. I have to see my father. Well, it must have worked because she heard footsteps coming on the inside. She heard the key turning and the lock opening and the door open. And there stood a friendly looking man in a ball cap with a badge on. And he walked Lucy through the halls where there were lots of other workers to his office, told her to sit down and tell him what was going on. Well, she told him. She told him that her father was there and that she had just heard about him. And then she ended with, but my gran says he's a bad man and she doesn't want me to see him. The man stood up, he pulled open a file drawer and he started thumbing through it. And, John Martin, he was saying, John Martin. Ah, here it is. He pulled out a file. That's what I thought I remembered, he said. And he looked up at her and he said, turns out your father wasn't such a bad man after all. At least not while he was here. In fact, his record was so good, we let him out early. He's not here. He's been out of prison for about two months. That sounds like good news, but not to Lucy. She thought, my father's been out of prison for two months and he hasn't come to see me at all? He probably doesn't want to see me. Do you think that's true? What is going to happen when Gran and Granddad find out what she has done? We'll find out a little more next time.